Moving averages. In this short video, we're going to look at what a moving average is, how you calculate it, and what actually is the purpose of a moving average. It's probably a concept that may have come up on one of your business papers, and as a result of looking at this, we thought we'd break down a little video to explain it in more detail. Let's start with the basics. What is a moving average? There are plenty of definitions out there of moving averages, and I'd like to try and create my own definition, something that maybe can resonate with some of you that maybe don't understand it fully from when you've read it out of textbook or your teacher has taught it to you. So a moving average is a process that removes the spikes from a series of data. And this process enables trends in a data set to be easily identified and become more reliable. What I mean by that in simple terms is if you think about a typical data set, it can be all over the place. I'm going to show you an example. Have a look at this data set here. This is some previous sales data that you can see. Now what I've done here is I've just literally put in the sales figures all in million pounds for the different years, 2001 through to 2014. If you look at the data set and you study it, you can see that the data is all over the place. Some years they do better, some years they do worse. But what's the underlying trend? It's difficult to work out from just looking at the data there in your face. It doesn't really stand out to you. You could potentially analyse some of that data, and I want to say that now because if you're thinking, I can't do this, you can still get marks for analysis of data. So, for example, years where they didn't do so well, you can make links. So, if you want to look at, like, between 2007 and 2008, look at the drop. They went from £60 million now to £5.6 million. Why? Could that have been when a recession hit, for example? Did it slow down spending? Is their item going to be a luxury or a necessity item? You can make links there. You can link in elasticity of demand. All these concepts could come in to make a decision and a justification on the data. However, that's not really what I want to go this video. I want to show you what you can do with this thing called basically looking purely at our moving averages and using that data. I don't want to go down the route of trying to find excuses and trying to use other data. So let's start looking at trends. If I put that data on a graph, look at the graph. It doesn't you can see that I would say there's a general upward trend there. However, it's not easy to tell. We can definitely smooth it out and make it more logical. So for example, let's try and remove some of the spikes. Let's do our first moving average. The typical moving average you always see is a three year moving average. And what that means is you take three years and you average it out. So you can see there, 2001, 2002, 2003. There's my three years. I take the data. I find an average. So what I do is I add it together and I divide it by what I've got. So 3 plus 2.5 plus 4. Do it in brackets, remember, the Bob Mass method. Divide it by 3, I get 3.7. Then my next year, I obviously do 2002, 2003, 2004. So I would add 2.5, 4, 4.7. And I would divide it by 3, and I get 3.73. And then I would do the next year. So then I would do 2003, 2004, 2005. So I'd do 4 plus 4.7 plus 7, divide it by 3, and I get 5.23. Okay, you can see straight away the data has started to get an average. What I will say is though, a three year moving average is not the best one, it's only three year average. Let's make it better. Let's do a five year average. A five year moving average, as you can see on the chart, is exactly the same as a three year, only we use five years worth of data rather than using three years worth of data. So our first data set, obviously, we want to find 2003 because we need five years of data. So we've got the three plus the 2.5 plus the four plus a 4.7, plus a 7, divide it this time by 5, because it's 5 years, and as you see there, the moving average there is 4.24. And of course, moving on then, we move to the next level, so we start then with our 4.7, so we go 2.5, plus 4, plus 4.7, plus 7, plus 12, divided by 5, that would give us 6.04. Now, look at the data, it's starting to look different from the three-year moving average. So you look at the comparisons, the data is different. It's becoming more accurate because it's a great uh, set of data, a great set of data we've got for the average. Now, what you can do is you can do a seven-year moving average. You get the idea how this works. It just keeps going up in increments. Let's do one for the sake of it. So there we go. Let's do a seven-year moving average. So I'm going to set seven sets of data now at this point here. So I've got my three, my 2.5, my four, my 4.7, my seven, and my 12. I add them together, and as you can see, divide it all by 7, and lo and behold, what do I get? I get 7.03. And when I've got my 7.03, 
I can do the same thing again, so I can go 2.5, 4, 4.7, 7, 12, 16, and the 5.6, divided by 7, and I get my 7.4. Look how the data is slightly changing, but the, d the difference in the data is starting to become smoother. And that's because I'm increasing the accuracy of the data, I'm guessing. Clearly, you go 9, you can go 11. You see how this pattern's working now already about the moving averages and the trend data. But it's all well and good talking about it. Let's show you what it does on a graph. That is the data of a moving average displayed on a graph. As you can see, the blue line that you can see is the original data we've got. Look at the spike, it's still evident. If you look at the three year moving average, it doesn't fully remove the spike. It doesn't even swap it out, but it doesn't fully remove it. It doesn't fully alleviate the spike of data. However, look at the five year moving average. We start to see a trend line forming without the spikes. It's more of a, a realistic trend, more of an average set of data. Have a look at the seven year data. That's a very clear trend. You can see a very nice, clear pattern. That data is much clearer on the eye. You can use that to make decisions much more effectively than that spiky random data. And that's because we're taking away all those anomaly data that possibly could have been in that field set that we had to start with. And that's it. Hope everybody the end of this video now you know how to calculate a moving average. And you understand the statistical purpose of a moving average. What it does to a set of data. And that is purely the purpose of this video. Short, concise and to the point of how you calculate a moving average. We may look in the future at creating a video which can look at what the moving average actually shows and how you can use it to make business decisions. However, this video is purely about calculating moving average. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at bbusinessb. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash bbusinessb. Follow me on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash bbusinessb. And remember, there's a full range of resources and quizzes on the website, bbusinessb.co.uk. And until next time, keep buzzing.